Oh, we got a fire. First time in about a year, the 86 Shelby Daytona Turbo Z has a head on it. Fantastic. Let's dig into this thing. Uh, this thing potentially is going to be running in the next couple days. All right, quick satellite update. Front seats are reupholstered, back seats are headed to get reupholstered. Just did a fantastic job. Now it's gonna be night and day on that car. Also found an engine builder for this car, so big plans coming for that. But today's about the Shelby. I uh, got the headset on here. Valve cover was just there to keep the bris out of there. Um, so we've still got a lot to do. I mean, head bolts aren't even in it. I just got some help to help me lift the head up on there, new head gasket. Uh, for those of you who haven't followed this build, uh, click up here. Uh, we've rebuilt the bottom end bearings, rings, had the head rebuilt, had the turbo rebuilt. So we are uh, kind of in the final stages of engine reassembly here, but there's a lot left to do. Timing, uh, a bunch of vacuum lines, 457,000 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, turbo feed lines, oil lines, coolant lines, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot yet to do, but... We're gonna uh, see if we can't get this thing started for the first time in two years. All right, so we got our brand new head bolts here. If I remember right, torque is like 40, and then you go around again, 65, then you do 65 again, and then you go a quarter turn on all of them, which should equal something around 90. Uh, torque sequence is here. Uh, torque specs are in the front of the book. I'll have to double check them, but pretty sure that's what they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So your classic inside out pattern. Um, obviously we're using brand new head bolts. We're going to use a torque wrench that's, uh, about seven years old and has never been calibrated. So that's great. And we're also going to use an extension, uh, which is going to throw the torque off as well. So that should be the correct way to do this. Thread seal. It's probably not necessary, but we're doing it. We're just gonna slowly bring all these down to seat. We're off to a good start here. We got all flashing zeros on our seven-year-old torque wrench. Not sure what that means. Okay, well, it's started working. All right, here we go. All right, we got them all to 45, going up to 65 now. Okay, there we go. So we got to bring them all up to 65 twice. All right, now we got to go a quarter turn on each one and it should beep off at nine, at least 90 it said. So I'm gonna set this thing to 90 just so that I can make sure that they are. I mean, they're brand new head bolts, so they should um, but we're just going to set this thing to 90 if we can ever do that. Nine, 90. Okay. All right. Quarter turn on each one. We'll start with this guy. Okay. That hit 90. That's a good sign. Quarter turn. That hit 90 as well. Okay, here we go. Quarter turn. That one really hit 90. Okay, quarter turn. Didn't quite hit 90 there, but it was like 88, so we're going with it. 
So before we pop our valve cover on, I'm gonna do a little assembly loop here on the old cam. Let her drip down into the cam sliders. I'm gonna be a little tougher to get it on the windage tray here. So we're gonna just squirt some onto the slider itself. And there we go. Where that'll all kind of settle in there for first startup. All right, we got a little quarter inch bead of RTV in all the corners where this rubber seal is gonna meet the cork gasket. That's what they recommend. I don't know who they are, but I'm gonna follow the instructions that, that they asked for. All right, fellas, the engine is officially 100% assembled. It's fantastic. I wiped away a little bit of the um, excess room temperature vulcanization cream that kind of spit out as I tightened everything. Uh, hopefully this cork gasket seals up pretty good. I don't love cork gaskets, but that's okay. If it does leak, we'll just pull it off and do the uh, RTV thing to it. Um, there's a lot now that I have to figure out. You know, how do these turbo lines run? Above the fuel rail, below the fuel rail, right? You go back on the turbo back here. This guy right here, I believe, is where the oil feed goes in, this guy. Um, that's our oil feed. This guy back here is where our coolant, which goes from the thermostat housing down to the turbo. Like, how does all that kind of intertwine? Because you, then you got your, it's hard to remember what this thing even looks like. It's been apart so long, but you got your fuel rail here. Uh, you got your throttle body here. You got your intake tube, um, your, your air box right here. So all this is gonna be covered up. So we've got to kind of figure out exactly how these lines run. I may go back and look at some old videos because I can't quite remember. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of stuff like that. Luckily, I think I got most of the vacuum lines labeled okay. Um, timing, we got to put the cam gear on. I got to figure out torque spec for that. And then we can time it. Um, I believe this is keyweighed. Yes, it is. It's got a keyway there on this side. So that can only go on one way. And then we can time it. Um, the uh, oil return is already on the turbocharger. I put it on before we put the turbo on, but it needs to be hooked to the block on the bottom side. So I need to get underneath the car for that. Uh, so a lot of tedious stuff to go yet. Um, but I think we're only a couple hours of work away from this thing firing up. I mean, we're not gonna have coolant in it yet. I still gotta do a flush because the block had a ton of rust in it. Uh, I'm still gonna do a flush, gotta put oil in it. Um, but I don't think we're too far from giving her a little test fire. Uh, we've got to hook exhaust back up. Uh, there's a little bracket underneath that supports the turbo that it's going to be a absolute bear to get to. So uh, I've got to do an oxygen sensor. So uh, there's a lot yet to do. Uh, we're just going to try to figure out methodically how everything kind of goes back together. Well, I got updates. Um, put in all the sensors, some wiring, fuel regulator, um, Right now I'm working on the coolant delivery line for the turbo. I actually had to, let me zoom in here. I actually had to grind this bracket and remove that bolt to get this guy to spin in because it didn't have enough clearance. See how that just barely clears now? I, I, initially it would hit right here on the bolt and then I pulled the bolt out hoping it would clear this flange and it didn't. So I, this looks pretty overbuilt though. It's not ideal that I had to grind it, but uh, I think it'll be okay. So I think we're good. We're gonna get this thing twisted on and then uh, throw this bolt back in. And we should be uh, able to run the rest of the uh, coolant feed line for that turbo. So that's where we're at. We are almost getting to where it's punch list time on this engine. Um, we've got turbo coolant feed and oil feed lines are both hooked up. Uh, all sealed up and ran. I believe this is the only route that they can take, so they should be good. Um, this kit from turbosunleashed.com is a pretty good kit, but you do have to make two modifications. If you guys remember, we had to cut the uh, airbox bracket to fit this elbow. 
And then we also had to cut the bracket for the blow off valve back here to fit that side. So the coolant line gave us two little issues. Oil line fit great. Um, the coolant return, you guys don't let me forget, got to hook up that coolant return line to the block. It's on the turbo, but got to hook it to the block side when we get it in the air. And when we start doing things like uh, wiring in the O2 sensor, uh, turbo uh, support bracket, uh, all that stuff that has to be done underneath. Once we start doing that, cannot forget that line. We got to get the cam gear on and time it. Um, but we're getting pretty darn close, man. Um, got this coolant elbow hooked back up. I didn't tighten this clamp yet because I'm not sure whether the throttle cable goes above or below it. We'll have to see how the throttle body falls. Well, it's the next day. Got a punch list. Uh, everything above this line is what I need to do to get it running today. Uh, not a whole lot. I think it looks like more than it is. I need to buy a battery. If I get real close, I'm gonna run out and buy a battery. Uh, I need to buy, I probably have oil, but I need an oil filter. Uh, so I may have to run out and get that. Got it up on a jack. I'm gonna jump under it and tackle timing and the uh, turbo bracket underneath, exhaust, that stuff. So I'm gonna slide underneath. All right, timing is done. Timing belt is on. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail. I've got a video I'll link up here on the detail of how to time one of these things, but she is all timed, belt is tensioned. Um, we're gonna put our plastic casings on in a second here, but first I wanna get this turbo bracket done. This goes from the block up to the back of the turbo. I ran a tap and die for this bolt, so it's really nice and smooth in there now. This is on the turbo side. Um, I'm kinda dreading this because these are pretty difficult to get to, so I'm gonna go throw this on and then exhaust flange. Well, that was way easier to get to than I remembered. You could reach right up in underneath the car, get to the turbo side, and then the block side, all of it is completely reachable. That was, I remember that being terrible for some reason. I don't remember why. So now we're gonna swap out our little exhaust donut. Got a brand new one of those. And we got new hardware for our flange hookup. So let's get this baby hooked up. All right, I got updates. Um, it was not the turbo bracket that I remember being difficult. It was this driver's side exhaust flange nut. Way up in there was extremely difficult to get started. So that was what I remembered. But got the exhaust flange done. My new donut was too small. Something I'm finding a lot with this car is that parts just don't fit. This must be for one without a turbo maybe. Um, but in any case, reuse the old flange, put the new bolts in, got the turbo bracket done got our uh, coolant return line from the turbo all hooked up and thread sealed. Timing is done. Uh, I guess we just got to trying to check everything off the list underneath the car right now. I guess we just got to put this cover on and put the belt um, sprocket on here. So I think that's pretty much it underneath the car. All right, timing cover is on, upper and lower. Just gotta throw the old belt sprocket on here, or belt pulley. I've got these really trick titanium bolts, four of them, that TurboDodgeParts.com uh, supplies, uh, and I can't find them. So I got the original bolts, but I'd really like to find those nice titanium bolts. Uh, for that guy right there, but cannot seem to come across him. So I'm gonna look around here. And uh, once I get that guy on, if I find these bolts, gotta figure out how that wheel liner goes in there. And then we can drop the car. I think we're done underneath, which is huge. We're getting close, man. Real close, in fact. Fixed it down already. So, pretty sweet. Found them. These things are trick, man. Very cool. So we're gonna throw this sprocket on here, see if we can figure out this wheel liner, put the tire back on it, and we can drop this car and we're onto the top. All right, check. I'm actually gonna leave this wheel liner out for now um, because we still gotta run belts and I know we're gonna have issues with belt alignment here. You can see this alternator is not lining up with the um, new water pump, so. Um, I'm gonna be down there aligning some stuff. So, in fact, all three of these 
are spaced out differently than the um, actual pulley itself, the crank pulley. So yeah, we're gonna have to figure out some alignment stuff, but uh, so we're gonna leave that wheel liner out for now, but uh, we're gonna put the tire back on, drop it down and start checking things off on top. So what do we got left? Um, O2 sensor wiring, vacuum lines, fuel rail and heat shield, throttle body air box, engine oil. I mean, we are close. It's been a couple days since we've last spoke. I'm uh, working on wiring this O2 sensor and the plan is get this thing running uh, attempted to start tomorrow. I don't want to jinx it, but we're going to twist the key tomorrow. That's the plan. So get this O2 sensor wired and then fuel rail mounted, and then we can start messing with vacuum lines. These connectors actually work sweet. The old Amazon special heat shrink. They got like solder in the middle of them. They work pretty good. I've used them for a very long time and have knock on my valve cover. Never had a failure. O2 sensors all wired in. I guess we can cut this zip tie here um, and let our vacuum lines free and then look at what the fuel rail is going to look like going in the back here. All right, so I couldn't find bolts in my garage that were quite right for that heat shield um, because this car didn't have a heat shield on it. So by adding the heat shield, doesn't have the bolts either. So had to go out, it's kind of late, it's like 8.30, had to go out and get bolts. But the positive to that is when I went out, I got a new battery, I got oil, I got filters. So we have everything we're gonna need to fire this thing off. I was gonna go get this stuff tomorrow, but since I needed the bolts, I really didn't wanna stop without putting the fuel rail on. I wanna get more than that done tonight. So, well, we got everything to fire it up. Let's see if we get this thing tonight. I mean, we can do it tomorrow morning if we run out of time, but we might as well try. There's not a lot left, so let's see where we end up. Well, after messing with this thing for about a half hour, I'm going with two bolts out of the three, and we're just gonna run it. I got the far bolt in, the middle bolt in. This bolt here um, just cannot get started. I mean, there is absolutely no room in there to work. It's ridiculous. Um, so we're going to go with two bolts and hindsight should have put that heat shield on when the head was off the car, but Hey, next time I rebuild one of these, I will uh, know that, which is hopefully never. All right. Fuel rail is on and grounded. Um, we're down to just vacuum lines. We can fire this thing up. Let's take a look at our list here. Fuel rail, heat shield, yep. All right, well that mess of vacuum lines and electrical connectors and fuel lines and all that good stuff is all hooked up. Uh, I guess we just gotta put some oil in it, change the oil filter, throw a battery in this thing and uh, we'll try to fire it up. I'm noticing some issues, right? The throttle position sensor is hooked to nothing. Um, so that's great. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I think for now, let's just see if she starts. Got the fuel regulator all hooked up. Um, I got some 1030 synthetic. From O'Reilly, which is kind of the new Supertech. Supertech prices have gone up. O'Reilly's prices are pretty attractive. Uh, we got a Wix filter. And uh, let's do this thing. Let's put some oil in it and throw a hot battery in it and twist the key. I think we're there. Oh boy. This oil filter is the one thing that's easy to get to on this car. We're 
We're ready to fire this thing off. Let's do a fire test first. Put the positive lead on here. Start sniffing around, looking for smoke, right? Anything that's been sitting. It's a good idea to do that. Not smelling anything yet. Nothing yet. I mean, it's, it's kind of scary. The wiring on this car is quite crusty. Um, I think I'm out of stuff to do. I think we twist the key. This is a very surreal moment, guys. A little nervous. <sighs> Turn the flash on for you here. Fuel pump primed. I'm gonna prime it a few times. Nothing. Oh, we got a fire. Where's that coming from? Seems to be coming from an injector. Oh, not where you want that coming from. Let's unhook this. All right, well, we heard the fuel pump. We got fuel to the rail. All right, I just released some of the pressure. Yeah, there we go. So fuel pump works, so that's good. The smoke was coming from this area here. See how crusty the wiring is in this thing? I don't really trust it in a lot of ways. I mean, this thing is all fresh wiring, the whole injector harness. Um, weird. So we had no crank and we had some, oh, was it the starter? Oh, I hope not. That starter is just about impossible to get to. Oh boy. So it's not burning down with the battery hooked up. It's only when the key is turned. So that's telling me maybe it's a starter. Let's turn the key to the on position. The starter's brand new, rebuilt. These relays are going nuts. Yeah, it's not smoking. So it was only on a crank scenario. That's not good. Oh man, that starter's hard to get to. That's one of the, all the failures I expected to see out of this thing. That was not one of them. That I had that starter rebuilt. So with the key on, 
We're not getting any smoke. It's only when we crank. That is such a bummer. Let's try it one more time. We got relays going nuts. Power limited, light is on, whatever that means. Ah, oh boy. Okay, so maybe, maybe it's the fact that one of these relays is going nuts. There's not much of a more 80s sound than electronic noises not doing their job. <sighs> hmm. We'll have to start digging into wiring. Not doing it tonight. I am gonna disconnect the battery. That is for certain. Don't wanna leave this thing in my house. The fire hazard. Oh, what a letdown. Damn it. All of the things I expected to go wrong, right? Timing issues, vacuum line issues, fuel delivery issues. I didn't expect this. Although with these relays going absolutely nuts, maybe it's, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. Although we had smoke coming from behind the motor, which leads me to believe it's a starter, but starter wiring type deal. Um, shoot. Hmm. Well, the, I guess I'll start taking these relays apart, trying to source them, have to look at some wire and diagrams, no idea what they do. Oh, well, it's not often on this channel that we fail that hard boys, but failure, mission failure. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.